Welcome to Real Physics. Is the biggest problem of solar physics a misunderstanding? Could be true. Arguably, the coronal heating problem is a huge problem for solar physicists. Now, what do we mean by that? If you look at the corona, which is the outer part here of the solar atmosphere, this image is taken at a solar eclipse, so several hundreds of thousands of kilometers. And if you look at this uh, region, it is generally assumed that it has a very high temperature of millions of degrees and that's remarkable because we know that the photosphere that means here uh, the surface of the sun has a temperature of just 6000 kelvin so if you want to display a temperature profile of the atmosphere you need to go to a logarithmic scale here 10 to the 4 10 to the 5th 10 to the 6th kelvin that's already a little bit strange but if you think about you have to really ask yourself what is evidence do i mean direct undeniable evidence which is the case for the solar surface for the spectrum of 6000 kelvin that's very clearly a plunk black body spectrum or do we have another kind of evidence and sometimes in these models a lot of theoretical assumptions enter the back door and seem like evidence and I think this is the case here. Now, what are the hidden assumptions or what, what is the measurement that tells us that we have millions of Kelvins in the solar corona? It's ionized atoms, ionized iron in the first place. And uh, it's generally assumed that uh, how can atoms ionized? Well, if you have a very hot medium, so you have collisions and atoms bumping into each other and stripping the electrons of the nucleus. But of course the assumption here is a thermal equilibrium and you have these collisions. And that might not be true because you need a lot of temperature in this case, as I said, in the millions of degrees. Now the renowned astrophysicist Harold Sirin points out we must admit, however, that the ionization theory not only gives the wrong temperature, but fails to account for many stages of ionization observed in the corona. It's possible that temperature variations explain that fact. It is more likely, however, that there is something erroneous in our basic concept of how ionization takes place. And I think this is a very valid point. And we got to look at the standard solar model here with, uh, yeah, this assumptions about the photosphere of extending over 500 kilometers, then you have the chromosphere, and then above you have the beginning of the corona. And of course there is the alternative I consider very interesting. It's an alternative model developed by Pierre-Marie Robitaille, and uh, it assumes that the solar photosphere consists of a metallic or semi-metallic state of hydrogen, and above you have the chromosphere of very dense molecular liquid hydrogen and in that case you would have this very distinct clear surface but of course what is important in our case you have a different material here you don't have molecular or atomic hydrogen you have this metallic version which was proposed first in 1935 by Wigner and Huntington Wigner was a Nobel laureate and they proposed that there might be another state uh, under huge pressure, such a state might form, that practically all the hydrogen atoms get rid of their electrons and the rest, the protons, the nucleus, form a lattice. And if you assume that this kind of material forms indeed the solar atmosphere, of course you have these coronal mass ejections and you have this kind of boiling surface and you have continuously materially getting ejected in the solar atmosphere. That means you would continuously have these clusters of metallic hydrogen, which of course contain still more millions or billions of atoms and easily, very easily by frictional electricity, they can be stripped off their electrons. 
And then you have these droplets or strands of metallic hydrogen, which are positively charged. And in the words of Pierre-Marie Robitaille, if an unfortunate iron atom comes along, it can be easily stripped of all its electrons. That's a very reasonable intuitive mechanism. And I'm not saying this is a definite proof because physics is quantitative and you would need to elaborate on that, but just give it a fair chance. We have lots of lots of explanations for the coronal heating problem. I don't know, dozens, I mean, won't go into detail here, but I mean, if you postulate mechanisms, you can sometimes increase 50% or maybe double the temperature, but a factor of 1000 is just too huge to explain, in my opinion. And the true reason could be that we have not understood something at the very basic, at the very beginning, and that might be, that might indicate we are working with the wrong model. Besides that, there are lots of other problems with temperature in the standard model. For example, we have this picture which shows ionized helium of 30.4 nanometers, that's four times the Lyman alpha wavelength. And you see that, that uh, light coming from, say, okay, that's at least 10% of the solar radius here. And that means 70,000 kilometers. That means the, the corona would begin at, say, a height of 10,000 or even 5,000 kilometers. We are far out there in the corona with supposedly millions of degrees. But how could such ionized helium even exist at such a temperature? It's not possible. And there are other contradictions. There are contradictions with ionized helium of 468 nanometers that should not exist in the corona. On the other hand, we have carbon monoxide lines in the upper chromosphere that still proves that we are in the range of 3000 Kelvin or 4000 Kelvin. That means lower than the photosphere even. And that means that this profile would still go down. We have a lot of contradictions here and Robitaille has pointed out this in detail in his papers. And I've made a playlist if you're interested, I would say summarizing the very important, the very obvious facts here. But if you want to go into more detail, I recommend my book, The Liquid Sun. And of course you can even more in detail check Robitaille's papers. He has very, he has done very detailed work in all respects and he has also a very good YouTube channel Sky Scholar where you can check these details. In general uh, I think these big complicated models with many people working on it are a problem of modern science and we need to go back to this European style physics of individual thinkers who really want to understand how nature works and this is addressed in my book Make Physics Great Again. I think Robitaille is really a great representative of that individual courageous scholar that can revolutionize a field. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.